Hello and welcome to a new video. This is Unit 7, a new unit on polynomials for Algebra 1. And today we're going to be talking about naming polynomials in standard form. So since we're talking about names, we could use some Shakespeare and say, oh, what's in a name? Would a polynomial by any other name smell so sweet? That's a good question. So we're going to have a lot of vocabulary in this lesson, which means it's going to feel a lot more like we're actually having to memorize things than normal. Um, what we're talking about is polynomials. So this first blank, we're going to write polynomial. Now, what is a polynomial? You may recognize the prefix poly. It's not one that we use a ton. Uh, and in fact, I can only think of like three words that start with poly, polynomial, <laughs> polygon, and polytheistic. And between those three, maybe you can understand um, that poly means many. So a polygon is something with many sides. A polynomial, I don't actually know what nomial means, um, but it means, I guess, many terms or something like that. Uh, polytheistic is the worship of many gods. So we do have some reference maybe for what poly means, and that can help us here. So a polynomial is an expression made up of the sum of terms of the form ax to the k, where k is a non-negative integer. So what that means is we're going to see things like 2x to the fourth. This is a polynomial. Um, but we also could see things that have a bunch of these sorts of terms written next to each other. So something like 2x to the fourth plus 3, or maybe 2x to the fourth plus 3 plus x squared. That's all a part of the definition of what a polynomial is. And each of these little parts is called a term. So like the 2x to the fourth together, that's a term. The 3 is a term, and the x squared is a term. Really, the only requirement here that makes that would make something not be a polynomial would be if we made our exponent for x be negative. So if you saw something with an x to the negative 2, um, which you may or may not even realize what that means, that's not a polynomial. It does something different. The reason we name things like this in math, by the way, is because we want to show um, that there are things in common with these types of uh, functions or equations or whatever we might be looking at, graphs. And so anything that's a polynomial works in a similar way, essentially. So that's why we care and name them something. So more vocabulary. A polynomial is in standard form. And we may have talked about standard form as a thing with linear equations. Um, standard form can happen in a, a bunch of different areas in math. And it's just a way of saying, like, if we can, we write things in standard form because they tend to be, it tends to be the easiest way to look at something. So it's the way we like to use it or that kind of thing. So a polynomial is in standard form when the exponents of the terms are in descending order, not ascending, descending. And I have a really short little video that I'll do my best to link in the description that shows why that's what we care about, that it's actually the the x with the biggest exponent that kind of um, impacts our graph or our equation the most. And so we put that at the beginning, the one with the biggest exponent, uh, we put at the beginning, and then we make them count down after that. Um, the degree of each term is the exponent of the variable. So in this term 2x to the fourth that we made up over here, uh, the four is telling us that this is a fourth degree for that term. Um, and then the degree of the polynomial is the largest exponent of the whole expression. So since that this expression I have over here, since x to the fourth is the highest exponent that we have, um, then overall the degree of this polynomial is 4. And so what that means is if we're trying to classify this polynomial, we would think about any other polynomial that has the biggest exponent of 4 
and things would work really similarly in, in any of those cases. So if a polynomial is in standard form, the coefficient of the first term is called the leading coefficient. So in case you don't remember or aren't familiar with the word coefficient, coefficient is what we call the number in front of the variable. I'm missing a letter. Coefficient. I was missing two letters. Leading coefficient. So in the instructions later, there will be it spelled correctly um, in case I did not. But so if we have variables, um, and even actually if we don't, in a term, the number, like the whole number, whatever number it is that you have that's um, typically in front of the variable, that is a coefficient. And so the leading coefficient is going to be the coefficient that is at the very beginning if it's in standard form. There's a whole lot going on here, and I get that. So once hopefully we've done a few examples, things will start to make more sense. If, if right now you just feel like I'm kind of um, saying a lot of words that don't make sense, I apologize. But I think um, once you once we go through some examples, it will help. We we classify these polynomials based on how many terms they have and what their degree is because, like I said, there are similarities between anything that has one term, anything that has two terms, anything that has a degree of three. And so because of those similarities, we name them certain names so that instead of having to, you know, actually like say 2x to the fourth plus 3 plus x squared, we can just say whatever the name of it is and start talking about it. Once I tell you the first one on number of terms, I think that you um, we'll probably, and, and guide you a little bit, you could probably figure out this, the words for two terms and three terms. Um, it also is really similar to the idea of using polynomial, but just using different prefixes. So for one term, our prefix that we're going to use for one is mono. So a monomial has one term. And so there, you can probably think of other words that start with mono um, that have something to do with the idea of one. So monotone, which is, I wouldn't know anything about being monotone. I have very, very, I don't know, a polytonic, I have a very polytonic way of speaking, maybe. Okay, so mono means one, monobial means one term. So two terms. Now if we think about a prefix that means two, there are probably more than, there's probably more than one option, but the one that comes to mind most easily for me and is the correct one here is bi, so binomial. So if you think of a bicycle, for instance, that has two wheels, you'd be on the right track. But then you'd probably go back and be like, well, a bicycle with one wheel is a unicycle. Why isn't it a uni un uninomial? And I think we just answered our own question by the issue with trying to say unomial. That's funny. Okay. Um, a so a trinomial, like a tricycle, a trinomial has three terms. So we can look at just a polynomial in general and we can say, okay, how many terms does it have? If it has one, two, or three, we can name it like this. If it has more than three, we just call it a polynomial with however many terms. We don't, we don't keep going with the naming convention typically because after three, there's really not as much of, of interest that we could say about something like if you have six terms, the most interesting thing about it is that it has six terms. I don't know that there's really a ton that we do with things with six terms, so we don't have we don't we don't call it a special name. Let's look at degree. So a degree of zero uh, is called a constant. And that's because when we have a degree of zero, and I'm going to have a separate video to talk about exponents because I think it's related here. But degree is talking about um, the exponent of x. And so having a degree of 0 means that we have x to the 0. But x to the 0 actually equals 1. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So what that's going to look like then is actually we might have a number that doesn't have an x with it at all and that's going to be a constant polynomial just a number by itself and this may be really tricky if this is something that's tripping you up like i said i'm going to have a different video that just tries to explain this concept separately um, but just know that 
basically if there isn't an x then it's a constant polynomial one uh, degree of one we've seen things like this so a degree of one would mean that we have x to the first power and that's our biggest power but we don't normally write the first power normally we just write it as x and so we've actually done a lot with things like that this year they are called linear so it could be like just having x it could be 2x plus 3 that sort of thing um, 2 is something we're going to do a bunch of the, later this year having a degree of 2 would mean that we have an x squared and so that special word for that is quadratic now that might seem weird because um, quad might make you think of 4 but the naming here I believe has something more to do with the idea of you know when you when we say this is x squared, right, if you've never really thought about it, the reason we say squared is because we're thinking of a square. Um, so that, I believe, has to do with why it's it's got this quad in front, even though it's a degree of 2, not a degree of 4. But it is a little bit confusing at first. Just know that we do a lot more with quadratics than we do with a fourth degree. So... Um, it probably will be uh, relatively easy, at least eventually, to remember that quadratic has to do with 2. Um, 3, having x to the third power, you might be able to guess this name if you think about, so this is x squared, what's the other way we say x to the third power? That would be um, x cubed, 3 is called cubic. And then really, um, we don't see a lot of fourth or fifth degrees or sixth degrees or anything higher. Um, so really, I just, I personally really like the names of these. Um, and some textbooks will include them and some won't. Most include, I think, four, but not all include five. And theoretically, we could go past and make up names for six, seven, and eight, or maybe they're already out there. But we just see um, polynomials that are that have that high a degree so infrequently that it's not, it's not as important, really, I guess, uh, to have names for them. Um, so having a degree of four would be like x to the fourth, having a degree of five would be x to the fifth, and this would be quartic and quintic, and I believe if you've taken Latin or in Latin or whatever, um, that will seem familiar to uh, like the names of the numbers four and five or something like that, I think is how that works. I don't know, maybe. So let's look at some examples. And on each of these uh, examples, we're going to be asked to do quite a few things. We're asked to write it in standard form, give how many terms there are, the leading coefficient and the degree, and then classify the polynomial by number of terms and degree. So we're going to start off here with standard form. I probably won't rewrite uh, these words every single time. I might abbreviate or just, you know, if you're writing them in the same order as what it asks you, that is probably also helpful. So standard form means that the very first thing, the very first term should have the x that has the biggest exponent. So if I look here, I have 9x to the fourth, and that's a term. Uh, and then I have minus 2x, which is a term. Now, what is the exponent for x on the minus 2x? Because if it's bigger than 4, then that needs to go first instead of second. If it's smaller than 4, then it's in the right spot. So because it doesn't have an exponent, its exponent is 1. Uh, that's how math works. If you have anything that doesn't have an exponent, its exponent is a 1. So um, we can think of this as negative 2x to the first. So the degree of this term is 1, but the degree of this term is 4. So since we want our exponents to descend, we want them in this order. We want it to be 9x to the fourth minus 2x to the first. So once we have standard form, well, first it asks how many terms there are. So, um, since 9x to the fourth is a term and negative 2x to the first is a term, that means there's two terms. And then it asks the leading coefficient, which I'll say is just LC. So the leading coefficient, if it's in standard form, is the number in front of your first variable. So that would be the number in front of x to the fourth, which is a 9. 
then we want the degree. So the degree is what is the biggest exponent for our variables. So our choices are 4 or 1, which one of those is bigger? 4 is bigger, so our degree is 4. And now we're going to name this by how many terms in the degree. So you might have to look back and forth at, um, I guess I should have said, hey, write down those names from earlier. I think probably most, um, most teachers would want you to memorize those names, at least um, temporarily. Ideally long term, but at least at least short term while you're talking about this unit when we name it um, We usually use the degree first and then the number of terms But I mean it really doesn't matter as long as you write both words There are two terms here, which makes it a binomial and the biggest exponent the degree is four So that would make it cortic. So the name for this would be cortic binomial So that's because the, the x to the fourth is, is the biggest exponent, so it's quartic. And there's two terms, which makes it a binomial. Okay, example two. Now this one is not in standard form, because if I look at these and I think about the exponents, there's kind of two issues to talk about here. So we've got this 7, which is a term. So our terms are separated by plus and minuses, our addition or subtraction. Okay, we've got this x squared. We've got a minus 2x, which we've already discussed, and hopefully I've convinced you that that would be uh, an exponent of 1 with that x. But what about 7? What exponent does the x that is with 7 have? And that may feel like a trick question, and it kind of is. There is not an x with this 7. So the exponent that the x has that's with the 7 is 0 because there isn't an x there at all. That, I think, is probably the easiest way to think of it. The other way to think of it is anything to the 0 power is 1, so we're allowed to put an x to the 0 here next to 7 because that's the same as 7 times 1, which is still 7. Um, so it's kind of a weird thing if you just can memorize that standard form you want to start with the biggest exponent and count down, and then you'll always end with, if there is something without an x, it always ends up being last, um, then that might be the best way to go. So for instance here, the biggest exponent is the x squared term, and then the negative 2x will come next because it's to the first power. So 2, 1, I didn't really mean to write that, but, and then the last thing we write is going to be our constant, which is the 7, um, which is a degree of 0. So then how many terms are there? There are three, the leading coefficient. Once it's in standard form, it's the number that's in front of our variable. What number is in front of x squared? How many x squareds do we have? We have 1. So <laughs> this is... Um, this is tricky. This can be tricky. Like, because 7 doesn't have an x to it next to it, we put x to the 0 and say it has a degree of 0. But because x squared doesn't have a number in front, the number that goes there is 1. Um, so this is kind of a unique case where what we're putting in ends up being x to the 0 and not something more simple like just a regular 0 or a 1. Um, so Hopefully we remember if there's not a number in front of a variable that that number is supposed to be 1. So the leading coefficient here is 1. The degree is the biggest exponent, which is 2. And so we would name this um, based on the degree, which is 2, so that's quadratic. And the number of terms, there are three terms, so that's a trinomial. One of the easiest ways to mess that last part up is to just be looking at the wrong thing. So if you were thinking this was a cubic binomial, you just you were looking at the wrong set of naming things. Um, you were looking at it backwards, so watch out. This one uh, is either going to be really easy or really hard because it's so short. So it's already in standard form because it, all we have is 5. We cannot rearrange 5 if all there is is a 5. So um, you could write standard form and then rewrite it or just 
I'd say not even worry about it. Give how many terms there are. So there's only one term. Um, the leading coefficient, since there's only one term and our leading, co it's in standard form, our leading coefficient is the very first number we see. So our leading coefficient is five. Now here's the thing that's tricky about just having five. The degree is the exponent that our x has, but we don't have an x. So our degree is zero. I know that's weird, um, but hopefully it's something that you get used to without too much trouble. So the name of it, a zero degree is a constant. And then because there's only one term, it is a monomial. And a fun fact, which may or may not be fun, but is in fact a fact, is that um, if you have a constant, it has to be a monomial. Like we can't have a binomial that's also constant because a binomial um, would have two terms, and so it'd have to have something else besides a, a constant with it. Anyway, that was short. <laughs> Let's do a really long one. So this one is not in standard form, um, but I think this is a fun one to kind of rearrange and look at because we look through and say, okay, what's the biggest exponent? It's this x to the fifth. That's, that's right here. So that's going to go first. And then um, we would look and say, what's the next exponent? So after five, if we're counting down, we'd go to four. So we're gonna put the seven X to the fourth next. And then we're going to do negative five X cubed. Oh, so I should not have put that plus there because that's minus five X cubed. And then we've got minus six X squared and then plus three X since there's not a sign in front of the 3x, it's a plus. And since we're putting it farther along, we need to actually make sure to put a plus in between. And then finally, our number goes last, which is minus 2. Whew, that was, that was a ride. Okay, how many terms does it have? It has 6, and I can tell that some of you are already frustrated about that, and you know what? I understand. The leading coefficient, we look at standard form and say, oh, that's a 2. The degree is the largest exponent, which is 5, so that's, oh, well, I don't need to name it yet. That's a 5. So uh, the name of this polynomial is a quintic uh, polynomial. <laughs> like I said, we don't use, um, we typically don't use special names for things that are bigger than 3. Um, so just, we just call it a polynomial. Easy peasy. Example five. So for each polynomial, write it in standard. Oh, why am I reading this? Um, this is actually already in standard form because x cubed is our biggest exponent. Nine does not have an x, so it would have a degree of zero. So we're already in standard form. Um, let's see, how many terms are there? There are two. The leading coefficient is this this negative six right here. And the negative part of that does matter. In fact, that's kind of that's the biggest thing we care about as far as leading coefficients go, is that it's a negative 6. Uh, the degree is 3. And so the name of this is that for 3 it would be cubic for degree terms makes it a binomial. So this is a cubic binomial. So a lot of vocabulary in this lesson. Um, so that can get take some time to get used to. It can take some like actual effort to really think about and figure out. Okay, um, you know what words go with what, and especially because this is also just kind of a weird new concept to you. Maybe that we're talking about all these x's. So um, it, there's not a lot of like work to it, which is nice. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be super easy. Hopefully it is. But anyway, thanks for watching, um, and I hope that uh, you'll join me again for the next video, and have a great day. Please subscribe and hit that like button, um, and I'll see you in the next one.